क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग इट इज द नेक्स्ट बिग ब्रेक थ्रू इन आर जनरेशन आफ्टर द इंटरनेट इन दिस वीडियो वील बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल द बेसिक्स यू नीड टू गेट स्टार्ट इन क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग एंड वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी लुकिंग एट लाइव एग्जाम्पल्स इन विच वी कैन एक्सेस अ क्वांटम कंप्यूटर दैट इज होस्टेड बाई आई बी एम समवेयर इन द वर्ल्ड एंड यू कैन यूज इट एंड कोड इट राइट फ्रॉम योर लैपटॉप लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट Quantum computing has a huge effect on cybersecurity itself. It is a computer which can break the only and the main encryption source that we have that is protecting all our passwords, banking details and every other information that exists on the planet. The most widely used cryptographic algorithm which is the RSA algorithm or the reversed Adelman and Shamir algorithm it is used to secure banking details and every other information there the us government has lately passed a law which mandates companies like google and facebook to update their encryption system to quantum free encryption this will mandate these companies to change their cryptographic algorithm to a much secure one so first let's understand how the rsa algorithm works so let's say that we have one person right here and another one here they They both want to exchange some kind of information and they don't want anyone else to know about it what really happens is that they get two very big randomly generated prime numbers and their computers basically multiply these numbers our computers may be good at multiplying numbers but we are not really efficient in finding out their divisors or the product in which the numbers came from so once we have the product it's nearly impossible for a classical computer to get the two numbers or the two prime which made that product this is the basis of the rsa encryption system now once you multiply those two numbers you get a really big number which is used to garble up your message and send it to the other person and the other person is able to ungarble that message using the really big prime factor key now classical computers cannot decode this because it's really difficult to get those two numbers of which the product came from but a quantum computer can do it in merely seconds so that is why it poses a real threat to cyber security and it's very important for cyber security analysts like you and me to understand what this is and how this is going to affect our cyberspace recently china claimed that it has already broken the rsl encryption system with quantum computing and this posed a threat to the entire world nobody actually knew if they were lying or not but they still could not take the risk because every single piece of digital information was encoded in rsa from our banking details to our school details to every single thing that is there on the digital space india recently passed a law that gave 6000 crores to the quantum computing industry for the advancement of it in the nation it's a really big field and there is not been a better time to start it now let's understand what quantum quantum computing is actually made of it is based on three major principles of physics which comes from quantum physics so let's start from the beginning once we reach the size of quantum particles once we reach the size of atoms of electrons the particles there don't actually behave like the particles we have right now every particle on earth as we know experiences gravity right but on the quantum state there are no classical physics laws which are applicable because those quantum particles behave as a wave and as a particle if you are through 11th or 12th grade you might have heard about the de broglie wavelength this basically means that every single particle in our universe has a particle nature as well as a wave nature but the masses of the particles around us is so big that we just cannot notice that wave behavior but once we go to the quantum level that wave character starts emerging so we need some other theory other than classical physics to govern on the laws of these small particles these theories come from quantum physics quantum physics has three major parts which derive quantum computing the first and the most important part is superposition you would have seen that on a normal computer a bit can only exist in two states a zero and a one right but in a quantum computer there is something called a qubit a qubit can exist in both a zero and a one at the same time i know it seems fictional but this is actually what happens 
a quantum state is where a bit or a qubit can exist in two states at a single point of time. So it is a zero and a one at the same time. Now the main problem that we face with quantum computers is that after we get the results from it, it is very difficult for us to get the information that we actually need from it. So it is still very difficult to retrieve that piece of information from that quantum computer which is given a ton of results. The next thing in quantum physics is entanglement. Entanglement basically means that if you have a particle right here and you send an entangled particle light years away and you just spin this particle right here at the exact same time the other particle will also spin. The name explains half of the things right so they, both of the particles are entangled and there is no source of energy which is running between them. So there is no connection between them right. If there were any connection we would be experiencing a time lag between those two particles spinning right but as soon as we spin this particle the entangled particle will also do the same. The third thing which is tunneling. Tunneling basically means that if you throw a quantum particle through any matter or through any physical barrier it will just go through it. So there is a lot of mathematics and physics going on in here but this is the basic crux of what is going on in quantum computing. If you throw a particle through a matter wall or if I throw a quantum particle right here through this wall it will go through it right. So basically it really creates an assumption that teleportation might actually be possible because we are traveling through matter. Quantum particles are traveling through matter right. That entanglement suggests that there is no needed connection or there is no needed energy between two particles which are light years away to still be entangled by some kind of force. Now again there is a lot of physics going on in here because quantum computing is majorly derived from quantum physics. But we won't be going that deep in this video right here. If you really like quantum computing and you want to read more about it, I'll leave some links down in the description so you can lead, read those blogs. And now let's move on to the computer where we can actually code a quantum computer. You can learn what is quantum computing and a computer which is located somewhere you can actually access that quantum computer which contains 32 qubits. Let's get started. So right now I'll be telling you how you can actually learn quantum computing on the internet online absolutely for free if you want to and I'll also be sharing some paid courses with you which are a bit better and from very good universities if you are in for it you can you will also be getting a set certification and some college credits. So uh, here in Google I want you to just go and type uh, IBM quantum computing right so if you see right here IBM uh, is the leading company which makes content for high school students and so as you can see right here from this blog IBM quantum qubit and qubit partner again to offer quantum computing course for thousands of high school students this is a blog uh, which is made by IBM right and it's a basically a stem program which IBM holds for quantum computing right it uses a programming language called Qiskit and uh, you can run it right from your uh, visual studio code editor or any other editor you have and uh, basically it's a framework kind of thing and you have to learn every single thing from this in order to code quantum computers and if you want to do this you have to first learn the fundamentals of quantum computing right so to do that I, I wanted to go to edX and right it's asking me to sign in right so uh, right here we have got introduction to quantum computing and this is a free course offered by the British Columbia University I leave the link down in the description below and there is also one course uh, that is offered by MIT X right so MIT X is MIT's online learning platform and you can just type MIT X quantum computing right and the first link that you see right here right so it is this program is paid but it's from you know MIT and uh, it also gives you some college credits so it's a little bit pricey but if you can afford it just go for it it's a four week program and there are two courses involved there is quantum algorithms for cyber security chemistry and optimization and then there is introduction to quantum computing so you cannot do the second one without the first one because you need the fundamentals of quantum right and this is also is a quantum computer from IBM right so I told you there's a lead company in this and there are a ton of resources which you can see right here there are testimonials and Yes, all right. And there's also a demo video, right? So and an early word offer. So I'll leave the link down in the description below. You can enroll from there. So uh, coming back to IBM here, as you can see, we have got a course from British Columbia. It's absolutely for free. I'll link down. And here, as you can see, we are getting 
every single thing of quantum computing and it is giving us the difference between classical computing introduction to coding quantum information and coding so there are around uh, nine modules in this and this will give you a brief idea on what you are doing and if you want to dive deep into it and if you want to learn quantum computing quantum coding i suggest you to go to ibm's quantum platform just sign in right and uh, let's go on this these jobs right here right so i wanted to go on these jobs and these are the quantum computers that are, you can actually access right so these are the instance systems so uh, as you can see right here you have got access to four instance systems and it's of 127 qubits so that's a lot right and if you really want to know how these work and how you can code them so here as you can see ibm has also given you the map of optimization so we have got advanced setup in installing qscade configure qscade sdk lo locally so first we have got introduction on what ibm is the community how you have to install it and basically you can run a hello world program on a quantum computer right so it always starts with hello world and here you can see we have got the ins installation how you can install qscade onto your local system right so uh, everything is there here on this website called quantum.ibm.com and uh, if you want you will be getting much more cooler stuff here so you, these are build circuits so ibm has their own circuitry path where you can build quantum computing algorithms with block coding so if you have ever heard of scratch is basically the first step if you are trying to learn to code right so you use blocks to make your program do things right so the same thing happens with quantum computing it uses a block mechanism to teach you what quantum computing is and then you move further on to actual line coding right so ibm has given you all right so there is a lot to do here and they have also given you videos and like you know source codes and everything so everything is there here again link in description and there are debugging tools build noise models right so this is all in python and from ibm so just a prerequisite for this is you need to have a really good grasp of the python language because if you don't know python you will be kind of lost in this right so the first step is to learn a programming language then to master the framework of qiskit and then you can try to code quantum computers or you can do much more stuff then here you can run this right so you can use your account credentials your authenticator channel of your choice right and then you choose a system simulator send a job and view the job results so you can basically send a job right so you, you create something you send a job to the ibm quantum computer because there are a lot of people in line you will get your result after 10 to 15 minutes you will receive the job results and that is basically run by a quantum computer so that was it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like this video be sure to smash that like button down there and if you're into cyber security bug bounty and all cool tech stuff like quantum computing just subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time